Salam sejahtera and a good day. In this topic, we'll be talking about variable types in research and their characteristics. Research is all about the correct use, correct manipulation, and correct interpretation of variables. So what are variables? Variables are quantities or qualities in research that are measurable, and it enables us to evaluate whether research objectives has been achieved. And of course, since we're talking about variables, it has to vary in order for us to make any meaningful use of it. And it is frequently the focus of research because it measures whether the problem statement that you post and the problem associated with it has been solved. For example, we could be looking at effects of atmospheric carbon dioxide levels on attention span among DBM students in DKBC. So what are the variables? The variables here will be atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and, of course, attention span among DVM students. So you can also see that these two variables are interrelated. So we are trying to postulate that the atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide affects the attention span of DVM students in DKBC. So Having said that the relationship among variables will be important, it is important as well for us to understand the characteristics of their variables. Number one, they are independent versus dependent variable. This is actually a key characteristics that I want everybody to understand because you shall be using it when you are operating the SPSF software later. Independent variables are also known as experimental or predictor variables determine how dependent variables or outcome variables respond. For example, back to the example of atmospheric carbon dioxide and attention span just now. So the carbon dioxide levels can be stated as high, medium, or low. And the attention span can also be stated in terms of high, medium, low, or simply in minutes. Independent variables itself should be, in, should be exclusive. That means it cannot a high cannot a high variable cannot be a median level and cannot be low at the same time. And these independent variables are sometimes known as factors. So they are known as factors because they can be manipulated by researcher. So you will see this in SPSS whereby they will ask you who are the which are the independent variables. So it's important for you to know factors that you use in research are frequently the independent variables. This will be an example of uh, independent and dependent variables. So in this case, you can have a concentration of CO2 as categorical or as continuous values as indicated here. Attention span can be a categorical or continuous values as well as indicated either as very good, good, poor or very poor attention span. And then having said that, it is important for you to investigate the causal relationship using maybe one-way analysis variance or one-way ANOVA uh, and determining whether the concentration of CO2 as categories or attentions and attention span in minutes. And you can also check for association and strength of relationship between variables by running correlational analysis. I like to emphasize here that the correlational analysis mentioned here has nothing to do with clinical correlations that you typically see or discuss under clinical conditions. The second characteristics will be, you could be talking about either qualitative or quantitative variables. In short, qualitative variables are actually variables that you cannot measure explicitly using a continuous number. Whereas a quantitative is the opposite. You can measure it, uh, it has an absolute value and you can measure it confidently. For example, one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, one kilogram, two kilograms, and three kilograms. So in this case, you can see that it can be referred to as, the variables can be referred to as those that can be measured or quantitated directly, or to some extent, some that can be based on judgment or perception. So there are two qualities that we should be talking about here, length of attention span in minutes, whereas qualitative example will be quality of attention span, something that may differ from one person to another person. And this makes it very difficult for us to, uh, to, to, to state the repeatability of some of these um, variables. Quantitative data generally has better repeatability if measured with reliable instrument. 
And it is, of course, common practice to convert some qualitative data to quantitative data. But in order to do that, that require laborious verification procedure as respondents or subjects earlier, earlier experience or background may influence their judgment and perception. A very good example. How do you, how do you standardize the interpretation of, well, frequency of, let's say, coming to class? Oh, uh, always, rarely, and often. So the concepts of often, rarely, and always may differ from individual to individual. Often may mean once a week, or may even mean 10 times a week, and so on and so forth, according to different experiences of individual. And likewise, if you're talking about always or rarely. The third characteristic of the variable will be attributes. This is where you discuss variables as either categorical, continuous, or discrete. Categor categorical variables are created from a series of all possible responses. For example, strongly disagree, disagree, no opinion, agree, strongly agree. And it could be either nominal, that means based on names alone without any order, or ordinal, that means ranked by relationship, or even to some extent, dichotomous, such as yes, no, day, night, male, female. You can also have discrete variables that only allow for certain numbers. For example, one cat, two cats, three cats. You can never have anything that is in between unless you are looking at maybe a carcass in the postmortem room. Continuous variables allows for all range of numerical values. For example, 1.2 meters, 34.56 kilograms, 7.8 liters, and so on and so forth. And one key attributes that you need to understand when you use continuous variable is that they may or may not follow normal, normal distributions. An important part that we shall be discussing later on conformance to normality. The fourth characteristics will be causality and relationships between variables. Researchers should be clear about relationships of variables in their research, whether the weightage of variables and how much does it contribute to the changes seen. You may investigate one factor and then you find out later that the factor only contribute to 5% or maybe even 1% of the changes seen. Then you have to determine whether that variable is important enough in your research. And of course, you also need to know whether the independent variable and the dependent variables are directly related or not, and not through a third variable. For example, if you are trying to relate the amount of time spent at mama stall, uh, amount of sleep, and academic results. So this is a typical example that I use in class to talk about how amount of time spent at the mama stall will actually affect academic results. And of course, you know that the amount of time spent at mama stall is not an absolute determinant of academic results. It will be wrong to say so because there are so many intermediate uh, intermediate variables involved. This could have included amount of study time, amount of sleep time, and all kinds of other variables. So in this case, even though amount of time spent at Mama store could be a very good independent variable, the dependent variable that arises from it in terms of uh, academic results may not be a reliable indicator of whether the amount of time spent at Mama store really affects academic results. And of course, we should also be mindful that not all variables are measurable. If they are non-measurable, you may have to find a way to triangulate or to make sure that they are measurable. Otherwise, it could be difficult for you to conduct quantitative research unless you are trying to go down the qualitative research pathway. The fifth characteristics that we shall be talking about will be parametric versus non-parametric feature of the variables itself. What do we mean by parametric variables? Parametric variables are comprised of parametric data. That means they are either continuous and absolute. So in this case, please reflect on the earlier characteristics of variables that we have talked about in terms of data attributes. So parametric data followed a predefined distribution and oftentimes a normal distribution. So parametric data are typically set as to conform to normal distribution, whereas non-parametric data are mentioned to not to conform to normal distribution. And they comprise of discrete data, ratio, percentage, converted numbers, and they may not follow any types of distribution or non-normal data. 
why? You can look at this particular example here. If I say cow A is 20% heavier than cow B, so what is cow A's actual weight? And you can see that it will be impossible to determine cow A's weight without knowing what is the absolute weight for cows cow B. And being parametric or non-parametric variable will also determine the type of suitable statistical methods that can be used to analyze them. As you can see here, there are three columns here. The first one will be description of the measurement methods or analytical method. The column in the middle will be whether you are talking about parametric data or and the last column on the right will be talking about non-parametric data. Parametric data can be measured in terms of mean, whereas non-parametric data can be measured and expressed in terms of median, mean, and mode. And when you are trying to compare two groups of parametric data, you use independent t-test or PET t-test. The equivalent in non-parametric data will be Mann whitney u-test for independent t-test and wilcoxon sinrec test for PET t-test. Likewise, if you are conducting one-way analysis of variance, uh, for parametric data, the comparative equivalent will be Kruskawalis H-test in non-parametric analytical methods. And if you are running two-way ANOVA without replicates, the equivalent in non-parametric methods will be Friedman's test. However, if you are performing a two-way ANOVA with replicates, the best way is to transform the data and do it as a two-way ANOVA, assuming that it uh, it conforms to distribution of normality under parametric data analytical conditions. Likewise, you can see there are further descriptions about correlations, regressions, and other methods. So for correlations, parametric calls for the analysis of the person's R, whereas in non-parametric methods, you shall be focusing on Spearman's rank row. COD stands for coefficient of determination. So correlations when analyzed as parametric data will be very uh, much dependent on coefficient of determinants, whereas COD is totally useless if you are analyzing using ranks under non-parametric conditions. So we shall be talking about some of this when we arrive at the relevant topics on regression and of course other topics on chi-squares, test of independence, goodness of fit, and other methods. Finally, the last characteristics of variables will be other characteristics that is accorded by rules or function. So you can have controlled variable or a blocking variable. This means a variable that must be fixed to enable a dependent variable to be observed accurately. For example, if you want to compare the effects of age and sex against uh, in, in, uh, for, for a drug. So in order to do that, you need to fix the factors of age. That means you categorize one group of animals young animals comprising of, let's say, both males and females, and then an older group of animals also comprising of males and females. And with that method, then and only then, you shall be able to control the effects of age in this case. And you can also have a concept known as a blocking variable, which is similar to how you control the following outcome of the, uh, of the initial variable. So in this case, it becomes important for you to know how many variables that you should be working on and that will greatly determine the sample size that you should be working with later. In specific circumstances, such as in the analysis of regression, you could be dealing with a certain type of uh, variable known as dummy variable. This is typically a categorical variable that is used in regression analysis so that the effects of an independent variable can be investigated properly. 